Hi everyone and welcome to this video on using the MATLAB code that we'll use throughout the semester to take data with our USB data acquisition system. I'm just going to walk you through this code really quick, uh, hoping to show you maybe some things about MATLAB that you haven't seen before because we'll use this code from time to time and it's important that you're comfortable using it. So let's just take a quick tour through what we have here. This note up top, uh, I want to point out really quickly because this is going to be important. This code will save some data for you in an Excel file and it'll also save an image of your figure. But if you uh, don't rename those files or change these names that we'll talk about in a second, your data will end up getting overwritten. And I'd hate to see you get to the end of the lab and have uh, all your data before the last experiment be deleted. So make sure that you change those file names each time you want to take new data. The first thing I want to talk to you about is the way that this code is written here in a file. You might be used to just typing all your MATLAB commands into the command window here, but I prefer to write my code like this in what's called a script. And what will happen is I'll walk you through the code here and you may have to make some changes, but when you're done, you'll just click this run button up here or you can press F5 and it'll be the equivalent of typing all these lines of code here down into the command window. And this makes your life a lot easier when you're writing MATLAB code. So I would recommend if you're not used to writing scripts like this that you start to learn a little bit about it. But let's just take a quick look through the code now. First, these three lines here, these clear all the variables that we have over in our workspace. It closes all the windows like figures you might have open and it clears the command window. So I typically put these three lines at the start of any code I'm writing just to get rid of all the previous items that might be stored in MATLAB. These lines here are the most important in the whole code. The, uh, they set the parameters for the data acquisition we'll do. So let's take a look at these quickly. The first one is the sampling rate. So this is how many samples per second we're going to take on each channel. So we're going to take 2,000 samples of the voltages on channel 0 and channel 1 on your data acquisition system. Then this next one tells us, this number of samples here tells us how many samples to take. So this says we want to take 100 samples of each channel. We have an input range here, and this is in volts, so we can measure right now from negative 5 volts to positive 5 volts. And you also have these other options over here for voltage ranges. And last, there's this item, the Excel file name. All the data you take will be saved into an Excel file that we'll see will show up over here. And we're going to see that that's, that's going to be a really nice feature for getting your data saved. But you can set the name of the Excel file here. And again, make sure if you take more than one set of data that you change that file name. The middle part of the code you won't need to worry about too much, so I'm not going to go through it in detail. But long story short, all this does is sample the data. Here we break the data into the variables chan0, which will hold the voltages for channel 0, and chan1 that will hold the voltages for channel 1, but you won't need to change anything in there. And down at the bottom, this will be where you'll put the code to do whatever you want to do with your data. So for example, in this sample code, we see I'm going to plot channel 0, and then we're going to add a title to the plot and add X and Y labels to it. And I'm also going to plot the data as blue dots. If you were to just type plot time comma channel 0, you would just get lines connecting all the points. And I'd rather have dots, so I type this B dot here. Then I also want to save the figure, and you may not be aware that MATLAB can do this, but if I type save as, this GCF stands for get current figure, and I give it a name, then it'll save that figure, an image of it, as a JPEG. And you can change this figure name here if you want, but make sure you have the .jpg extension on there. I can also do some analysis on the data, so I can say standard deviation equals this STD will take the standard deviation of channel 0. And because I didn't put a semicolon in there, I'll be able to see my result down in the command window. And then this last bit of code here just writes the data from uh, channel 0 and 1, as well as the time, to an Excel file. Let's actually collect some data now. I'm going to start out with a 50 hertz sine wave, and I'm going to sample it 2,000 times a second and take 100 samples of that sine wave. And now when I click Run up top here, now you can see here's my figure, and down here is the standard deviation that I collected from that sine wave. And you can also see that two new files appeared over in my current folder. I have my figure name, which I can right click on and open outside of MATLAB. And there you can see the picture of the sine wave I collected. And I can also right click again, open outside of MATLAB this Excel file, 
And here we'll see, I could insert a scatter plot of those data points. And once again, I have exactly the same data presented in an Excel file. We'll talk more about this later in the class, but sometimes strange things can happen if you either don't take your data at the right rate or take too many samples or too few samples. But right now, I'm going to collect this data at 48 hertz. And remember, I'm collecting a 50 hertz sine wave. And I'm going to reduce this, and we'll just take 48 samples. And I want to save this as a different image, so we'll call this aliased signal. And we'll talk about aliasing later in the class. But now if I run this code again, now you see, remember, this is a 50 hertz sine wave. And this looks still, for the most part, like a sine wave. But you can tell that it's obviously not 50 hertz looking at the time axis down here. But now you can see we have two images. We have my original signal, and we have this alias signal here. Now I want to show you how easy it's going to be to make your reports once you have images of all your figures saved over here. You're going to love this. These reports are basically going to write themselves. So let's say I start out with the alias signal, and I drag it over here into Word. I can resize it a little bit, and I can go home and center it. But then if I want to add a figure, I can right click and go, or I should say if I want to add a caption, I can right click and say insert caption, and we'll say aliased signal. And then you can see my caption appears right below the figure. And if I go back over to MATLAB now and grab my other figure, now let's say, oh, I actually want to put this up on top of that second figure. We'll make that the same four inches that the other one was. Center it. And once again, right click and insert caption. We'll say original signal. And now you can see that Word has automatically updated the second figure to be figure two and the first one to be figure one, which is pretty nice.